Good news if you were a fan of the Monday Night Football doubleheaders tested out this year. It could become a regular occurrence as soon as next year. That's according to a new report from the Boston Globe. And if you weren't a fan of it, uh, they don't care. Welcome to Shut Up Football. I'm Jeff Stoltzfus. That's Kevin. Last week, a 10-3 team changed their defensive coordinator. The Panthers got an upset, I guess. And the Chargers hit a new low. Out the stick. The Chargers turned the ball over five times. I knew the team butter bath was a bad idea. Rookie quarterback and obvious cop, Aiden O'Connell had four touchdowns. I think he fell asleep on one, and they slid him into the end zone like they were curling at the Olympics. Did the Chargers collude to get Brandon Staley fired? Be less obvious. Take your foot off the gas, or this man's gonna be hanging from the rafters of Allegiant Stadium. The last thing you need is Brandon Staley haunting the Raiders. That's John Gruden's job. People said Staley would be fired at halftime, but come on! Seven more touchdowns and they're right back in this thing. The Raiders showed off their giant glowing vulva. Hard to believe Al Davis is buried under it. The Raiders went from 0 to 63 in four days. So I guess they had it in them all along, like the spirit of Christmas or muscular dystrophy. Brandon Staley would make a horrible tampon. He just couldn't stop the bleeding. He was fired less than 24 hours later. The next time he wears a headset, he'll be working a Burger King drive through Nick Mullins poked his head up, but he didn't like what he saw. Great, six more weeks of winter. This week, it was Nick Mullins with the dumbest interception of the week. Regret! He hit him in the face. Maybe replace Mullins every third play with Joshua Dobbs. Together, they make a disaster-free starter. Let's Morse code this bitch to glory. Dobbs to Dobbs, Dobbs, Mullins. Jordan Addison scored a pair of touchdowns. On one, he scraped it off the forest floor like Bambi shit and took it the distance. Jake Browning threw a rainbow to T. Higgins in the end zone. You milk that cow! Higgins scored again later, when he came out of the end zone to high point a ball and pirouetted like a goddamn ballerina as defenders stared at him. Don't act like you're not impressed. The Colts entered Lucas Oil Stadium. Watch out, it's haunted. TJ Watt blew his invisible conch shell. See, friends, assemble! The Steelers might as well have dove down a sandpaper slip and slide with all the friction they saw. The Colts took him to the woodshed with players who didn't even have names. Who is this man? How did he get number two? Gardner Minshew was having a near perfect day when all of a sudden. It always feels like the right time to remind everyone that this young man lives in a van in the off season. What the hell lady? Trying to knock him down a peg? What did he fly too close to the sun? Drew Bisky threw another interception and Tomlin shelved him. He shoved Mason Rudolph in dry. We're down by 17 and there's two minutes left. Fix it. Before the game, Coaches and players gathered for a prayer. Please don't let them put up 70 on us. Deaf ears, my friends. Here comes the pain. Laporta, Gibbs, and St. Brown scored touchdowns faster than you can say, dear God, it's happening again. The Broncos didn't see points until Lil Jordan Humphrey, pronounced with an Humphrey, scored a touchdown in the third. Peyton was furious at Russell Wilson. What was he saying? What I talk with Russell about is none of your business. Not a problem. We employ CIA level lip readers here. My baby avocados. She tastes the hourglass inside the rainbow upside down Pepsi Cola taste test. Figgy pudding. Tony Rigatoni was back and so was his family. The parents are living it up. They're enjoying it. Agent is to the right, looking like a leprechaun. The Giants offensive line might as well be cardboard cutouts of former greats. Tommy DeVito took more sacks than a welcome to prison party. Jimmy Graham was pretty fired up for a guy who looks like an unsharpened pencil. Derek Carr had multiple scores, and the Saints marched on. Pee, 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 pee. Our graphic says it's raining. Many thanks to David Njoku for taking the time out of the future to be here. Justin Fields slipped away from Miles Garrett like a lubed banana and put it on Cole Komet, who celebrated with battery. Flacco threw three interceptions and fumbled once. But how can you be mad when he's pushing rope like this? If Joe Flacco wins a playoff game with the Browns, we might have to reconsider him for the Hall of Fame. Forget the Bears, he's already beat my expectations. Fields threw a prayer ball, and Darnell Mooney had it in his hands, before kicking it to a defender like an out-of-pocket rocket. David Njoku best described the play, saying, I damn near shit myself, and I'm glad he didn't, 
because they might have been flagged for having 12 browns on the field. This mother showed up without shoes. Play had to be halted early as kicker Eddie Pinero and Sir Purr were locked in a death stare for over 40 minutes. Late in the game, Desmond Ritter found a wide open wide receiver but threw it over here instead. Tusty! Chris Tabor showed the patience of a Hindu priest at a bus stop. He used Sun Tzu's ancient war tactic, death by a handful of paper cuts. The Panthers never saw the end zone, but it was still enough to beat the Falcons. You know, sometimes you, you, know, you knock at the door all the time and no one answers, and sooner or later you gotta kick it down. What the hell does that mean? Is it sometimes or all the time? And if no one answers, then go the fuck home. Don't kick it in. That's not your door. Maybe I was sleeping, tuckered out from a long day of door shopping, snug in my bed and comforted with the knowledge that I had finally found the perfect door, only to wake and find a rain-soaked Chris Tabor in my house and my sweet baby door hanging from the frame by a single damaged hinge. Baker Mayfield made history as the only opposing quarterback to have a perfect passer rating at Lambeau Field. He had four touchdowns, including one to backup tight end Koki, who ate the ball raw after saying, now it will be with me forever. That's not how that works, Co. I give it three days before it's laces out. Mayfield called his favorite play, titties. The Packers were aggressive early and awful. They failed twice on fourth down. Love lost the ball and the game. This game got out of hand quick. The Dolphins were stacking points. Injuries piled up. The Jets' medical tent was standing room only. Zach Wilson left before the half with a concussion, and Trevor Simeon came in to fall down and get intercepted. So the broadcast shifted to non-stop coverage of Aaron Rodgers' displeasure. He looked like a father watching his son be the worst player on the field, but his son was the New York Jets. Trevor Simeon practiced smiling on the sideline. Nope, that ain't it. Oh, he closed his eyes. Mini darkness retreat. Why does Patrick Mahomes look like he joined a Mexican graffiti gang? Miles Bryant must be the strongest man this side of Krypton, after Travis Kelsey flopped to the ground. He was like a toddler waiting for a parent to notice. You are fine. Rub some dirt on it. Mahomes threw a pair of interceptions. On the first, rookie linebacker Marte Mapu showed better hands than the entirety of the Chiefs receivers room, which was illustrated on Mahomes' second pick, after it bounced off Kadarius Tony's open hands and right to the defense. Nice try, rubber hands. Good luck trying to blame the refs for that one. I wouldn't expect Mahomes to look Tony's way again if he was juggling fire. Bailey Zappi was picked off. He looked like his dog just died and someone shit in his oatmeal. Shh, said Bill Belichick, approaching with a pillow. The Chiefs broke out their favorite special teams play. The end zone is lava. The Titans were cosplaying in their Oilers uniforms. Will Levis scooted his boot for a touchdown. Yay, oil! Case Keenum got the start for the Texans. He pitched a bad idea and the defense intercepted it until Dalton Schultz went on a rescue mission and took it back. Mine? Every shot of Mike Vrabel looks like he's banking mental notes for next week's therapy session. They went to overtime and suddenly the role of ref was a speaking part. Boo! Too much exposition! James Conner scored first and lost in the celebration was Hollywood Brown's impersonation of a basketball hoop. Swish! No notes. Brock Purdy found Debo Samuel so alone, I'm surprised he didn't catch the ball with his feet and handstand walk into the end zone. McCaffrey was just as open on one of his. Roll out some craps. This man's got enough space and time to learn new hobbies. Maybe a rock tumbler. Keep on brand. Amari DiMarcado, which I thought divided the Spanish from the Portuguese, broke free for a long touchdown. Kyler Murray hit Elijah Higgins late for a touchdown, but by that point, Brock Purdy was four touchdowns deep and sucking oranges like he just ran a marathon. Citrus, bitch. It was a rough day for Sam Howell. They called him a gunslinger, which I don't find complimentary. So was Lee Harvey Oswald, and he has like zero Super Bowl rings. Howell was picked off on a bum pass. They said it was a teachable moment, but the only thing he learned was how to hold down the bench. They brought Jacoby Brissett out of cryo storage and called together a couple of sympathy touchdowns. Sam Williams dove into the Bills punter like it was all swim at the local pool. My guess is he wanted to turn back right about here. But gravity is a ruthless mistress. Josh Allen lost his wristband with the call sheet. They were running plays based off his arm freckles. He jammed one across the goal line. They said he was looking for the soft spot in that defense, AKA the baby's head, which are notoriously soft. And I apologize for going through so many babies to learn that. 
Josh Allen, show me all your teeth. Lamar Jackson fell down, almost got sacked, and then threw an incomplete pass. He makes it look so easy. Jackson was flagged for intentional grounding, which begs the question, what are the refs looking at when they talk to us? The camera's gotta be a mile away. Do they just pick one person and stare at them? Trevor Lawrence gave golf carts to his offensive line. Meanwhile, children are spilling into the halls of St. Jude. Why do you hate children, Trevor? The ball emancipated itself from Trevor Lawrence's hands, and he spanked the ground. Who's a dirty little field? His safe word is Pantene with Pro-V. Isaiah likely said he calls Lamar Jackson L. Like the little girl in Stranger Things? A likely story. It was bring your virus to work day. They said Jalen Hurts had flu-like symptoms, and they were pumping him full of IVs and Gatorade fast twitch like it was nobody's business. Landon Dickerson's face cage came off, and he had to come out before he started snacking on the delicious Seattle linebackers. They're filled with nougat. Nobody knows. Matt Patricia was the Eagles' new defensive coordinator, and I had more complex emotions about that than a teenage girl. They put Sean Desai in the booth, which is like a retirement home, but the communal TV only gets one channel. The Eagles lose it. What's he even writing? Is he just playing tic-tac-toe with himself, or writing Mrs. Sean Patricia over and over? The Eagles punted, and Seahawk John Radigan gave it the bad touch. He smacked the ball like it sassed him. Nice try, John. He knows the rules. He just likes to smack shit. He's like a cat. Drew Locke put him up late, and Hurts made a throw he should have stayed in bed for. Seahawks got the upset, and everyone else gets to swipe right on penicillin for the holidays. Last week, I gave Dak Prescott the soft pretzel of the week for his Cologuard commercial and told people to get their booties checked. I forgot to mention that colonoscopies are generally for people of a certain age, and my viewership, based on Google Analytics, is younger. So apologies if I caused any undue ass play. There is no soft pretzel of the week this week, I just didn't find anything worthy. Some of you said that I should give Kevin the pretzel when that happens, but no. Thanks for watching Shut Up Football. Subscribe, leave your comments below, say hi to your mom for me, and we'll see you soon. Peace! Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boy. It sound right, boy. Pee 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 pee.